The iPad Air just came out, and this promises to have power that we haven't yet seen on a more budget iPad before, but can you use it as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I'm very excited to do this, we do these all the time, because I like to find out, can you use these tablets, can you use these phones, as your only video editing device? Because common wisdom would say, you need a big computer to do video editing, right? Like 4K is really tough on processors. Not so the case when you talk about iPads. So what we're gonna start with today, is there's really three parts of video editing, in my opinion. There's the processing, the cutting, and then the rendering. So let's start off with the processing. So first off, what you would need to do is, let's say you shot this video on one of the cameras that I use today, and well actually that's what we already did, is I already took the unboxing footage for the iPhone 12 Pro, and I already moved it on here, because it does take a little bit of time, and I don't want to waste your time waiting for that to happen today. But normally what you would do, you'd use some kind of a USB-C dongle, then you would need to transfer the files from your SD card to the iPad. One of the negatives about any iPad when it comes to overall workflow or the process of your editing is that unlike a more traditional laptop, you can't work off of your external drive. So you have to import this through the Files app or through your photo importing app. I prefer the Files app. You have to import that into a file on your iPad. I imported mine into LumaFusion, User Media, you can see all the files right here. Then you can start using them in your preferred video editing tool. Mine, when it comes to the iPad, I just so happen to use LumaFusion, not sponsored by them, they're just the ones that I prefer because it's the best you can really find. You can see we can click on Files, Documents. What we'll do is to show you, you can click Add Link to Folder, then you can click any folder on your iPad that you may have saved footage to, then you can import them. Again, we've got it under U user media under LumaFusion, so that's where you can then go to see imported, and you can see all the files that we did. So that's the process. Kind of janky when it comes to iPads, but you make up for that in the other two thirds of video editing. So let's see here. Now we've got, like I said, we've got the iPhone 12 Pro unboxing video, which was shot in 4K 10-bit out of the Lumix S5 for the main camera. 4K 10-bit on the GH5 down here, and then 4K 8-bit for the Lumix G9 above us, just because it's easier that way. So let's see here. Now, I'm not actually anticipating any major problems. I mean, we just saw on the iPhone 12 that there was no issue editing 4K 12-bit files, so this has the A14 processor much like the iPhone 12, so I'm not anticipating seeing any problems. So let's see what we got. The speakers on this are pretty darn good too. Let's turn that up so you can hear all of that. Can you hear that? Uh, we unboxed the iPhone 12 Man, the other day, but the packaging on the 12 Pro was different enough that I figured, why not? Let wow, those speakers are fantastic. Now it doesn't have the exact same like speaker array as the iPad Pro, but that's legitimately good enough to do like audio processing in a video file. That's pretty good. You guys want it? Let's see if you all would be interested in actually seeing this get unboxed. And there's another key point that I want you to see. If a file is too beefy for like your video editing program, you'll notice that like when you hit play, it takes a few seconds for it to get going. So play. Oh, Apple instantly, instantly starts working. This, these Apple Silicon chips are, mm, they're fantastic. And I'm not seeing any stutters. I'm not seeing any slowdowns, any drop frames here. We'll just pick one here and then hit play. My Wi-Fi pad. Immediately started again. Like sometimes you can game the system if you like go to a spot and then wait, it will generate what's called proxies or it'll generate optimized media. But when you're jumping around like this, it doesn't have time to do that. And do we get the wide angle? Man. I will, the thing that has impressed me, the calipers to, maybe if I had a caliper. That is power. Like I haven't seen a single slowdown, a single, there's been no performance issues. And this is a, what, a 15 minute, how much time do we have on here? a 13 minute and 30 second roughly 4K 10 bit file. So there are different kind of codecs, there are different kind of files. There are files that are bigger size, they take up more space, but it's easier on your editing program. Those are called all I codecs. This is not the all I. This is the smaller, which means it's more compressed and it's harder on computers to actually do that processing after the fact. So this is a pretty tough codec and this is just crushing it. This is crushing it. This is good. This is good stuff. I really, really like to see this. Okay, so let's actually edit the beginning of this video and see how it would go. So Command B, and that's another big benefit of the iPad, especially the iPad Air, much like the iPad Pro, is we now have USB-C accessories and we've got all this Bluetooth mouse and keyboard connections, which is just phenomenal. So let's go back over here and listen. The iPhone 12 Pro just... Messed it up. The iPhone... 
Nobody's perfect. Even the everyday dad screws up a lot. You always got to make sure that... Uh, you always got to be prepared for your takes to be screwed up because I screw up a whole lot of takes when I'm making these videos. The iPhone 12 Pro is finally in all of our hands. So what comes in the box and is it any good? Okay, so at this point, I like to do my push in. So cut. Let's find out. That one's mine. It was mine. Good news, Gary. You got it. You got it right. Okay, so we can come over here to effects. Movement effects, zoom in for the good old standard Gary Everyday Dad, zoom in. Is it any good? Let's find out. That, that one's, one's mine. mine. What's up? What's up, everyone? I like having the cut, but I don't think it sounded that good that time, so I did another take. What's up? There we go. That was a much better one. So can I be? Come over here, delete. Okay, let's see the whole thing together. Let's find out. That one's mine. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I, I can figure it out, you can, okay, cut right there, because I like to do a little bit of a push-in right there. Where did that go? If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Okay, so cut, come over here, go back to this thing. Whoops, wrong, wrong button. Okay, come over here, zoom in, bring that down a little bit, back, Everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you, you can, can figure it out. out. So, so I'm very excited. Something. I actually wasn't going to make Okay, so very easily is what we're seeing right here. So let's actually, let's pop out the audio. Let's make sure the audio, it sounds pretty good here. I'm not hearing any big peaks. We can see over here. Video, uh, we unboxed the iPhone 12 the other day, but the packaging on the 12. It's staying in the green. I'm not seeing any big problems. If we were to increase this too much. It was different enough that I figured, now we're why not? Reds. Let's see if you guys want it. So we'll probably hear it fine now, but if we keep that in the red as we render and process the file, when it comes out on the other side, you'd probably hear some problems. And you don't, audio is such a major important thing of video editing, you wanna make sure that's in the green. My rule of thumb is I never want my peaks, like so when I'm talking right now and I get really excited, I never want my peaks to go above negative 12 decibels. Then you have some space in post where you can do that, where you add a little bit of gain. It just needs to be clear enough so that everybody can understand what you're saying. You don't have to go by like any kind of crazy like audio processing stuff. Just make sure what you're saying is clear enough. And you do get some really good audio processing tools here in LumaFusion. So you can see we can separate the audio right here. Let's click on the audio, go over to the audio tools, and you can see we can add filters, delays, distortions, a high pass filter, high shelf. You get all sorts of manual controls here, which I really like. You can choose channels. I generally do everything in mono. I like having all of my audio set to mono because sometimes when you're doing stereo audio, it just, it can have a lot more problems. So I prefer mono and you can set that up here. We saw the effects. Let's actually do a quick little bit of grading, see how that affects on this thing. Because again, on LumaFusion, we get a lot of options for that. So let's come down here to this guy. Now, if you're gonna use this program specifically and you wanna do some grades like contrast, saturation, some pretty standard stuff, you do the original file first, then you can see you get contrast, saturation, vibrance. You can change up your colors and stuff like that. Um, this is a straight out of camera file, so we don't need much. Maybe a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of saturation, and maybe, maybe I would just increase the reds like a Gooch, like not very much, like maybe there were 0.3. That might be a little bit too red, but we also want to pull down the greens a little bit. I don't like a green file all that much. That looks pretty good. So that looks pretty good. Um, that's probably as far as I would take the grade for this one. If you are using like a log footage, like I like Lumix cameras, right? So I would use Vlog. You can install LUTs in here too. You can see all the LUTs that are in here from LumaFusion. You can add your own too if you want to. Lumix has a whole like range of LUTs that you can use. LUTs are lookup tables. They tell your editing program how to process and unpack the files without you having to manually do everything if you don't. Welcome to LUT 101. We did a crazy one for the last time, but I don't want to add anything too crazy. Let's add a vignette. I'm a big fan of vignettes. We don't want to add any blurs or tiny crystals. Crystals were weird. We could chroma, we could blow out the green. If we had a green screen here, we could key that out, which is a really nice thing um, for a program like this. But I think that's a good enough grade for right now. Does this grade affect the performance at all? The packaging on the 12. Well, did it? No, it didn't. Is it tough to? So here's the. Yeah, not a single. That is a not a single problem. I love it. 
I love it. This stuff is phenomenal. So let's add some effects. We already did the zoom in. Let's add some kind of a cool transition because if you're gonna do a transition, why not have it be cool, right? I mean, what's the point of doing it if it's not gonna be cool? So let's add a transition right there. Which one do we want? Which transition, we gotta zoom in. And that's one of the things that I like about editing on an iPad is you can use the mouse and the keyboard or you can get hands-on if you really want a little more fine control. I can't do that on my computer, but I can very easily do that on the iPad, which is phenomenal. Like it is phenomenal. Bar swipe? Let's do a wipe, let's be Star Wars. Let's be Star Wars, we'll do a wipe. So let's see how that looks. Unbox. So Apple did let me... <laughs> Wipes are the best. Now, if you're making YouTube content, I suggest you just stick with standard cuts. But if you're gonna be, if you're gonna make, if you're gonna be having fun with it, you might as well go all Star Wars on it, right? Like I'm a big Star Wars fan. I don't have a Star Wars shirt on today, but I have a Star Wars shirt on a lot because I'm a big fan of Star Wars. Okay, so I'm not seeing any problems. We got the transition, we got the grade, we've got everything done so far. So let's add those other clips in and see if that starts to affect our um, playback or anything like that. So now we've got three layers of 4K. Why not? Let's nope, not a problem. Let's see. The thing that is impressing the most. Yeah, no issues. What I do kind of wish is, I, even if they. Not a single slowdown. It's just very. It looks amazing. So we do. Now, if you do something like this where you have multiple clips and maybe it's they've all got their own sets of audio, you can mute those very easily by just doing that. Multiple lens. We've got the zoom lens. See. So. Not a single problem for this tablet though. I didn't anticipate there being a problem. It's more of how does this compare to like the iPad Pro? How does this compare to like an actual computer? So far, like if you were doing a MacBook Pro 13 or a MacBook Air that costs significantly more than this, they would be having some serious struggles doing three layers of 4K files, especially 4K 10-bit files, which can be harder on a computer. So let's what we're gonna do now is there's, I said there's three parts of editing, right? We showed the processing, we showed the cutting, now let's show the rendering and see what kind of time we can get on that. I wanna show you how it would work if you were doing like me and you do a lot of multicam stuff, which is what three layers will do. So let's cut here. Let's delete all of these. So now we've got one five minute timeline that has those three layers, has some edits on them, has a grade on it. We got the clock over here with the brand new iPhone 12 Pro that we're we're still test driving right now. Let's set the stopwatch and then we're gonna render this out. So we're gonna render in movie. We're gonna save it to the hard drive to keep it. We're gonna save it to just the internal drive. We're gonna do standard, which is what I would recommend. I would not recommend doing any ultra or anything like that for YouTube kind of content. 4K, 30 frames per second. We'll keep the audio. We'll do it in H.264. All right, let's do this. Ready, get set, go. Start. Okay, so it looks like we're a little, we're like right at real time. We're a little faster than real time. Man, you can't see that just growing. I figured this would be a lot like the iPhone 12 when we did it. And that one started off a little faster than real time. And then it slowed down a little bit, but we're at about 21 seconds. And we're still, you can see we're faster than real time. So we're rendering faster than 30 frames a second, which is pretty impressive stuff for what we're doing, but I'm not gonna make you, we're not gonna belabor the point this whole time. So through the magic of video editing, get it, I make that joke every time because it gets funnier every time I make it, we'll cut and then we'll come back in just a minute. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, we got about 10 seconds left and you can see we are going faster than real time for the render. Okay, we ready? Get ready, get set, pounce. Okay, so it took four minutes and 32 seconds to render that file. That's fantastic. That's, I'm, okay, I'm legitimately impressed. A $600 tablet just did that. Like, I thought it was gonna be very comparable to what the iPhone 12 could do because it does have the same processor, but that's substantially better. That's like 45 seconds faster than the iPhone 12. And dang, I, and this is while it's screen recording too. So it's a part of its processing power is being put over to screen recording. So three layers of 4K, no problem, faster than real time on the iPad Air. That's. That's legitimately impressive stuff. Like that's that's why I like iPads so much. This Apple Silicon is crazy stuff. So could you use this as your only video editing computer? Absolutely. If you were gonna do some crazy edits, lots of multicam stuff, you can get that to cut no problem. The process 
is going to be the issue, right? Because you can cut it, no problem. You can render it, absolutely no problem. So can you use this as your only video editing computer? If you can get through the process, absolutely. And if you like this video, you're like, okay, Gary, I'm on board with the iPad Air and you want to see a little bit more, maybe you'd like to check out my unboxing video that you can find right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.